So if we look at the handshake, so here we actually have two functions that are um, actually, yeah, two main functions that are important, which is here we have verify connection state. And so this abstraction is verifying the connection state stored on the other chain. So is that tra that so translates to verifying that the uh, photo they have looks like us. Then the, no, sorry. It's verifying that the photo we have looks like them. And this part, which is verifying client state and verifying consensus state is verifying that the photo they have looks like us because it is verifying the client state they have stored for us. So the light client they have, we're verifying that in, in those two functions right there. And then verify connection state is looking at our, the ID card we're holding, our light client, and we're making sure that it looks like them. Cool, so chain A here we could say is Svampa. Yes, exactly. Awesome. And, and where is this happening in, in the open? This is happening on open try. This happens on open try. So we see here that if I go up a little bit, we're in con open try. Now I'm going back down and I go into open ACK and we'll actually see the same code right here. Verify connection, verify client state, and verify client consensus state. So that's why I wanted to point out on the crossing hellos that we actually do that verification again, even if it is redundant. It occurs both in the open try and the open ACK, but it does not occur in the uh, open confirm or open init. I believe if we look at open confirm, it just verifies the connection state. Can you remind me again, how often do we open or how, how often do we update the client state? The client state is updated every time you need to prove something on new height. Right. What or, is the, or the, sorry, it's the, the client is updated with new consensus state every time you want to prove something on new height, but the client state itself, its parameters are only updated if a counterparty chain undergoes an upgrade specifying that it's uh, information should be updated. So mm -hmm. not very often. It has not occurred. Okay. Cool. So now that I think those were good abstractions to kind of jump into, um, but now I think I'll zoom back out a little bit and we'll slow things down and we'll go into the proto files and we'll just look at the, the proto files. Pri primarily we're interested in the connection end and all that information. Um, so what do we have in this connection end? So connection end is how we actually represent a connection within our code. And this connection end needs to have an associated client state. So the client that it's built on top of. IBC is a stack. So we have clients at the bottom and then we're building connections on top of clients. You may have uh, multiple connections associated with the same client. Maybe you're opening the same connection again. So then you have two connections using one client, but you won't have the other way around. So you won't have one connection associated with two clients. That doesn't make sense because you want one connection per chain. So we have the client ID that our connection is associated with. We have the versions that have uh, either been proposed or agreed upon depending on the state we're in. And therefore we have the state because we need to know if we're in init, try, or open. We have the counterparty. So this is the information about the other person. And then we have a delay period. And I'll get to this delay period last. It was the last introduced thing of ICS3. Um, and I don't want to conflate it with any of the other information we're going to go into. So if we look at the counterparty, what does that information have? So here, the counterparty also has some sort of client ID associated with it, which makes sense. And it also has a connection ID. So this is actually how we map our connections in our store. 
when we have a key value, we need to use this ID as the key so we can get the connection as the value. And then we have a Merkle prefix. And this is something that really should have been stored at the client level because it's being used by the client to construct prefix paths, or Merkle prefix paths, which are then used to verify proofs. And we actually ran into an issue where we want to change this prefix because the client algorithm might need a new prefix depending on the version. Um, so with, when the SDK tries to remove their multi-store, it'd be nice if we could change what this prefix represents. But it was mistakenly put at the connection level and connections are non-upgradable. So this is actually set. Um, so we either have to devise a way to upgrade connections or deprecate it and introduce prefixes into the client level, but that comes with its own complexity. So for now, this is something that will be dealt with later on. But the main so the, two- Oh, sorry, just a question on the Merkle prefix. So you said that it's um, the client uses it to find the Merkle. So this is kind of like um, what Aditya went over, or so he went over an aspect and with how the tenement light client proofs are not actually sent over the wire, but they're basically stored. Yeah, and then you would have a specific route that you then like find the proof. Is this related to that? Yes. So um, the prefix path is specifically used in um, th this concept when you have multi stores. So currently the way the SDK function is that you have a store which maintains stores. So the IBC store is a value in that first store. And then when you look up the IBC store, you get a, an actual store with all the IBC state. And so there you have this prefix of the IBC store being the first Merkle path. And then you might have the actual thing that you're proving like packet commitments underneath that second store. Okay. So the issue that we ran into is that IBC kind of has this idea of a Merkle prefix, but the SDK wants to remove multi-stores entirely and just make it one store. So now we're left with our like the old light client algorithm construct expecting there to be a, a first store with this prefix, which requires all counterparties to upgrade in order for verification to be correct. So that makes it a very tough upgrade path. Okay. Cool. So the main gist here is that we need the client information and the connection information of our counterparty. And with all that, we can, um, that's basically all we need because we just mostly need that for proofs when we do the actual handshake. So we can verify the client and we can verify the connection. We can, um, we can quickly look at the version. So the version here is, so with an IBC, we have two defined versions so far within the actual specification. We have a connection version and we have a channel version. I like to think that the versions at each level kind of represent the level above them uh, most of the time. And so in this case, we have a version in the connection and I like to think it mostly represents uh, things about the channel handshake. So in this structure, we have an identifier and then we have optional features that could be supported. How this actually looks in the IBC Go code is that this identifier is just one for the IBC specification version one. And the list of features is like unordered and ordered corresponding to the channel types that we support. So if we added partially ordered channels, that would be a feature that would be added on to this existing default version. So I like to think that this is kind of helping us perform the channel handshake from the very start to finish without any issues. The identifier can be useful in potential changes to the rest of the connection handshake. But I've also found that um, in ways it can also be a little bit too late in the stack to sp specify this version. So there is no one important step of connection handshakes is that we verify the client state of the counterparty that the counterparty has stored and we verify the consensus state that the counterparty has stored. But all of this is being stored before we even think of connecting to another chain. And so this causes an issue if you change how the how or where the client state is stored or how or where the consensus state is stored, we have no way of actually um, translating that into the connection handshake until it's possibly too late. Um, 
Yes, because what you basically need is you need the client to understand what version the counterparty already supports before the connection handshake occurs. So let's say you have chain A or Svampe, and they want to, they support IBC version one and they support version two, but they use version two by default. And so they store their client states under this like new key that has like some changes that we've done to improve query optimizations or whatever. But Bluemore only supports version one and Bluemore is expecting version one to be stored. And the problem is that Svampe already stored it at version two. So when they try to do this connection to handshake, the verification of that client state and consensus state just isn't possible because Bluemore is expecting it to be at this older version, but Svampe has put it at the newer version. And even if Svampe had done it at the uh, protocol version one, then stored it at the version one, then you could probably complete the handshake and you could probably even complete it if someone else also spoke version one and two, but then you're still never using the version two improvements. So you're basically still running version one. So this is like an interesting problem of when you don't have any information about the counterparty version, it becomes hard to sort of uh, prepare for the connection handshake in certain areas, such as the proof verification and the client consensus state. Um, and I've thought of ways, we've had good discussion of how to address this, but it's a bit of a futuristic problem. So it still it takes some changes to be made, um, but we have a good, basically the client level would be capable of having some understanding of what version the chain it's tracking is running so that it can probably, it can properly store the client and consensus states such that the verification can be done. Cool. Um, the last thing I would like to mention is just a characteristic of our code. We have this structure called identified connection. You've probably seen it with identified client and you'll see it with identified channel. It's just a way of wrapping the connection with a connection ID associated with it because it's redundant to store the ID in the store when you're using the ID as a key. But this is useful at the UX level when a um, relayer or client wants to have access to this connection, but they also want to have the uh, connection ID associated with it. Cool. I, I wasn't sure if that was just uh, for exporting Genesis or not, actually. I was looking at um, a lot of the protos over the last few days. <clears throat> I noticed identified channel or identified connection was mm -hmm. commonly used for what it's another like use exporting case. Genesis. Another use case might be you say, hey, I want the connection associated with this channel ID. And so if we just re return the connection, you wouldn't actually know which connection ID it is. So instead we return the identified connection, which provides useful information. But of course, if we're using the connection ID to map to the connection struct, you don't need the ID in the connection struct as well. One question, this, so, so this, um... Uh, proto messages, except, well, except the identified connection, maybe the other ones define the, the data that is stored in a state? Uh, yes. So connection end is stored in state and it's used for verification during the uh, IBC connection handshake. So this is an important proto definition because modifications to it break the handshake. Okay. Um, the counterparty is stored in the connection. So it is also used in proofs. And so we can't break it because then you break connection handshakes. And then version is also stored in the connection. Um, and again, you can't break it because then you break connection handshakes. Params is just an SDK thing. Uh, connection paths and client paths, I believe, are just helper structs, which allow us to quickly look up the associated clients or connections uh, with uh, either a channel or a connection. So for client paths, I think it's, um, you want a way of storing all the connections associated with certain client because iterating over all connections to figure that out is uh, not efficient. Cool. Uh, would you say that, for example, the, the version is stored in the connection? Uh, yes, with, it is here. We see, we actually have a repeated oh, okay. list of yeah. versions. The, the, that one, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the counterparty, yeah, okay. Cool. 
And I believe this is repeated because of the, um, the proposal step in, the, in it. We want to allow multiple versions to be proposed. But I believe by the time we finish the handshake, we are left with just a single version agreed upon. But we'll find out when we look at the code. Thank you.